In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to find the sum of an infinite geometric series. So let's say if it's 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 plus a half plus 1 fourth, and then it continues forever. How can we find the sum of the infinite geometric series? There's a formula for this. The sum is going to be equal to the first term divided by 1 minus r, where r is the common ratio. And that formula works if the absolute value of r is less than 1. So in this example, the first term is 8. Now what is the common ratio? To find the common ratio, take the second term and divide it by the first. So 4 divided by 8 is a half. To confirm it, take the third term divided by the second. 2 divided by 4 is a half. So to get the next term, you got to multiply by a half. 8 times a half is 4, 4 times a half is 2, 2 times a half is 1, and so forth. So the common ratio, which is 1 half, is indeed less than 1. So therefore, we can use this formula to determine the sum. The series will converge to a specific value. If r was greater than 1, then you cannot find the sum of this infinite geometric series. It can keep getting higher towards the positive values or keep getting lower towards the negative values. So now let's finish this problem. So a sub 1 is 8 and r is a half. So multiplying the top and the bottom by 2, this is going to be 16 over 2 minus 1, which is equal to 16. So that's the sum of this infinite geometric series. Now let's try another example. So let's say it's 3 plus 2 plus 4 over 3 plus 8 over 9 plus 16 over 27 and so forth. What is the sum of the infinite geometric series? So we can see that the first term a sub 1 is equal to 3. Now what about the common ratio? So let's divide the second term by the first term. So that's 2 divided by 3. Now just to confirm it, it has to be the same. So we need to check the third term divided by the second. So if we take 4 over 3 and divide it by 2, that's going to give us the same value. If you multiply the top and bottom by 3, 4 thirds times 3 is just 4. And 2 times 3 is 6. 4 over 6 reduces to 2 over 3. So we do have a common ratio. And since the common ratio is 2 over 3, the absolute value of r is less than 1. 2 over 3 is basically 0.6 repeating. So we could find the sum of the infinite geometric series using this formula. So it's going to be 3 divided by 1 minus 2 over 3. So to simplify it, multiply everything by 3. So 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 1 is 3, and then 3 times 2 thirds, the 3's will cancel, giving you 2. And 3 minus 2 is 1. So the sum of this series, which goes on forever, will add up to 9. Now sometimes, the infinite series may be presented in summation notation. So if it's given to you like this, how can you find the sum of the infinite geometric series? Well, you can begin by listing out the terms. So if you plug in 1 into the sequence, 4 over 5 raised to the 1 minus 1, that's going to be 4 over 5 raised to the 0 power. And anything raised to the 0 power is 1. So the first term is 1. Now to find the second term, you need to replace n with 2. So it's going to be 4 over 5 raised to the first power, which is simply 4 over 5. And then the third term is going to be 4 over 5 raised to the 3 minus 1, which is 2. So 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25. And so a pattern will emerge. If you plug in 4 
this will be 4 minus 1, which is 3. 4 to the third is 64. 5 to the third is 125. So you can begin by listing out the terms. And then you could determine what the common ratio is. So if you take the second term divided by the first, you could see that the common ratio is 4 over 5. And the common ratio is going to be the number that's raised to the n or the n minus 1 power. So you could see it uh, right here. The first term, we could see that it's clearly 1. And because the common ratio is less than 1, we can use this formula to determine the sum. So it's going to be 1 over 1 minus 4 over 5. So multiplying by 5, this is going to be 5 over 5 minus 4. So the sum is 5 in this example. Now, let's say if you don't want to write out the sequence of partial sums. How can you determine the first term and the common ratio? There's a formula. And for the series with the sequence a to the r raised to the n minus 1, the sum is a over 1 minus r. So basically, this a is the first term. And so we can see that this formula is in the appropriate form. And the number that's in front of 4 over 5, it's invisible, so it's an invisible 1. So you could see that a is 1, and r is 4 over 5. Notice that everything else matches. n is 1, and we have n minus 1 on top. So let me give you another example problem. Go ahead and find a sum of this series. So notice that we have it in this form, a times r raised to the n minus 1. So we can clearly see that a is 8. And by the way, this is equal to a over 1 minus r. So a is 8, and we can see that r is 2 over 3. So now we could just finish it. We don't have to list out the sequence. So I'm going to multiply everything by 3. So this is going to be 24 over 3 minus 2, which is 24 over 1. So the entire sum is 24. So if you see a 1 here, then this needs to be n minus 1 if you're going to use this formula. So let's say if we start from 0 and go to infinity instead of starting from 1. So in this case, what's a and what's r? Now, if you have it in this form, a times r to the n, it would still work out the same way. The sum is going to be a over 1 minus r. So we can see that a is 4 and r is 2 over 5. Now, if you're ever unsure, just list out the terms. The first term, if you plug in 0, it's going to be 2 over 5 raised to the 0, which is 1 times 4. So the first term, a sub 1, is 4. Well, technically, this is going to be a sub 0, because the first term now is not a sub 1. We're going to start at 0. So the first term is really a sub 0 now. The next term is going to be 4 times 2 over 5, which is 8 over 5. And then it's going to be 4 times 2 over 5 squared. So keep in mind, this is a sub 0, a sub 1, and then a sub 2. So to determine a sub 2, it's 4 times 2 over 5 squared. So 2 squared is 4, 5 squared is 25, and so that gives you 16 over 25. And then you can repeat the process. But if you take a sub 1 divided by a sub 0, that will give you 2 over 5. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 
And then at this point, you know how to finish the problem. So it's going to be 20 over 5 minus 2. And so the sum is going to be 20 over 3. Now let's say if we have this example. Let's say this is 3 to the, actually, let's say 2 to the 3n times 5 to the 3, actually, 5 to the 1 minus 2n. What's the sum of that series? Now, in this case, we need to put it in a more appropriate form. So let's simplify this expression. 2 to the 3n is basically 2 to the 3rd raised to the n power. And 5 to the 1 minus 2n is 5 to the 1 times 5 to the negative 2n. Now, 2 to the 3rd is 8. So we have this so far. And then 5 to the negative 2n, that's 5 to the 2n, which is basically 5 squared raised to the n power. Now, 5 squared is 25. So we have 25 to the n. And 8 to the n over 25 to the n, we can write that as 8 over 25 to the n power. And we have a 5 out in the front. So we can rewrite the series like this. Now, we can't really use this formula because it doesn't start at 0. And we can't really use this formula either because even though it starts at 1, we don't have the n minus 1 term. So if you can't use one of those expressions, the best thing to do is list out the terms, determine the first term and the common ratio. So if we plug in 1, the first term is going to be 5 times 8 over 25. So 5 divided by 25 is 1 fifth. So this becomes 8 over 5. That's the first term. Now the next term is going to be 5 times 8 squared over 25 squared, which is 64 over 125. And then from there, this is always going to be the common ratio. So the number that's raised to the n or n minus 1 that's the common ratio because you're always going to multiply the previous term by 8 over 25 to get the next term. So 8 times 8 is 64. 5 times 25 is 125. So we need to multiply the numerator by 8 and the denominator by 25 to get the next term. So 64 times 8, that's going to be 512. And 125 times 25, that's 3125. And then this will continue on. So the first term is 8 over 5. The common ratio is 8 over 25. And this is less than 1, which means we can use the sum. We can use the sum formula. I said that wrong. We can use this formula to find the sum of the geometric series. So it's going to be 8 over 5 divided by 1 minus r, and that's 8 over 25. So we need to multiply top and bottom by 25. So 25 divided by 5 is 5. And then take that 5, multiply it by 8. So that's going to give us 40. And then 25 times 1, that's 25. And then these will cancel. And so we're going to get 8. 25 minus 8 is 17. And so that's the sum of the geometric series. It's 40 over 17. Go ahead and try this problem. Let's say the sequence is e to the n power divided by 3 raised to the n minus 2. So go ahead and find the sum of the geometric series. Now let's put it in a more appropriate form. 
3 to the n minus 2. That's 3 to the n times 3 to the negative 2. And 3 to the negative 2, if we put it to the top, that's 3 squared on top. And so this is going to be 3 squared is 9, and then times e over 3 raised to the n. So we can rewrite the series like this. So we can clearly see that the common ratio in this problem is going to be e divided by 3. And e is a number. e is 2.71828. And so if you divide that by 3, that's less than 1. So the absolute value of r is less than 1. So we can determine the sum of the series using this formula. So what we need to determine now is the first term. And the first term starts at n equal 1. So a sub 1 is going to be 9 times e over 3 raised to the first power. So 9 divided by 3 is 3, so it's 3 times e. So the sum is going to be 3 times e divided by 1 minus e over 3. So now we need to multiply the top and bottom by 3. And so this is going to be, let me just clear away a few things. It's going to be 9e over 3 minus, these will cancel, so minus e. And so this is the sum of the geometric series. Now let's say if we have this problem. This is going to be the last problem in this video. Go ahead and find a sum. So is this a geometric series? It turns out that it is, but you need to split it into two parts. The first part is going to be 4 over 5 raised to the n. And so that's a geometric series. And then for the second part, it's going to be 2 over 5 raised to the n. So in both cases, we can see that the common ratio is less than 1. 4 divided by 5 is 0 0.8. 2 divided by 5 is 0.4. Now we need to determine the first term for each one. So if we plug in 1, the first term is just going to be 4 over 5. And for the second series, if we plug in 1, it's going to be 2 over 5. So the first term and the common ratio is the same for this example. So we need to find the sum of each series individually and then add them up. So for the first one, S1 is going to be 4 over 5 divided by 1 minus R, and R is 4 over 5. And for S2 is going to be 2 over 5 times 1 minus 2 over 5. So what we need to do at this point, as always, is multiply the top and bottom by 5 for each of these. So for the first one, it's going to be the 5s will cancel. So we're going to have a 4 on top. And then it's going to be 5 minus 4 on the bottom. And then for the second one, it's going to be 2 on top and then 5 minus 2 on the bottom. So 5 minus 4 is 1. 5 minus 2 is 3. So this is 4 plus 2 thirds. So we need to get common denominators. I'm going to multiply this by 3 over 3. So it's 12 over 3 plus 2 over 3. And so the total sum is going to be 14 over 3. So that's the final answer.